I guess it helps if I take off my camera, huh? Or my, uh, tape off my camera. One of those funny things when you, you, you get everything right and then you forgot your, uh, you, you know, take your tape off your camera there. Yeah, set your camera up right. Your green screen. Welcome, 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 everyone. Let's make sure all of our sounds are looking good. Sounds looking good. Let's get some music on. Holy cow, look at all these, uh, raids and hosts, man. Let me see if I can ca catch up with all you guys. Had LJ coming in early with a raid. Jason was first guy in. King Lee with a raid in nine. What's up? King Lee, Bing Lee, and all of the bingo boppers coming in with that raid. How you guys doing tonight? Tactical misses in the house. Brooklyn coming in with a raid of four. The damn. Even Unsolicited is in the house. What's up, guys? Harlem is here. Oh, my God. Mickey Dead Eyes. Oh, my goodness gracious. Everyone is here. Welcome, welcome. Happy Friday night, everyone. And you know what this means. It's, it's been a long week. You know, we've had our ups and downs. But it's the weekend, man. It's time to relax. It's time to hang out, have some fun. All right. Let your, let your sorrows dissipate. You got three days to relax. All right. And it is time, ladies and gentlemen, for Fish Slapperty. And I must say that when I came up with this idea, Jacuzzi now hosting. Thank you so much. Moscatel is now hosting. Thank you so much. When I came up with this idea, I knew it was going to be fun. I was really looking forward to it. We all love King Lee Bingley's uh, movie night, which he's, he's revamped, by the way, guys. So for, for the love of God, go check him out. I believe it's still Wednesday nights. Um, it's fantastic, and it was such a cool community-building like experience. And, you know, you, you know how life gets. You know, we get busy and stuff like that. You know, life takes you in different directions than you expect. It's a lot of work, too, guys. I really respect his work more now because having gone through this but i just thought you know what it's something fun let's keep it light and have something that's got some chess themes to it but that's not really you know chess per se that's just something where you can hang out as a community have some fun and it has really morphed into something bigger than i could have imagined and it's been a lot of fun guys it just keeps growing every week there are some things guys you guys are going to see tonight you're not going to believe the the amount of work and the amount of the, of uh of, of uh, support that's gone into this show. So we're going to get into it very quickly here. Just going to make sure that everybody is settled in. Get your popcorn. Get your coffees. I got my, my Harlem Night uh, mug, you know. Nice fresh coffee. HK Plays now, Houston. Thank you so much. Now, I'm just going to pause this music for uh, just one hot second. As I explained to you how this is going to work in case you happen to be new to Fish Slapperty or possibly you may have missed last week and you didn't see what went down. So I'm going to explain to you how this is going to go down. So we have a new format. I'm actually just going to turn my volume down just a little tiny bit. Let me know if that's too lo uh, uh, low for you guys. LJ, how you doing, man? Welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here on Fish Slapperty. So we have a new format, guys. The, if you've been here in the past, it was more of a... It had similarities to Jeopardy and other game shows and stuff like that. And I didn't want it to be that. I wanted it to be a unique kind of a game. So we switched it up. We now have the 16 tiles, as you see here. We have eliminated Final Fish Slapperty. We have the 16 tiles. And we don't tell you what the categories are now. You're going to have to just flip over the, the, the cards and figure it out. Now, there are still six categories with three questions each. And they're worth 100, 200, and 300 points. And everybody in the chat is a contestant for the most part. There's one exception. Well, I'll get to that in a second. 
Now, because we've got six categories of three questions, that's a total of 18 questions, and you only see 16 tiles. That's because two of these tiles have something special underneath, and that's something new that was introduced last week, which is called the wild tile. And there it is, folks, the wild tile. It doesn't seem to be playing the music again, though. Dang it. I don't know why it's doing that. It's supposed to be playing music. Which is really unfortunate. But at any rate, that's the wild tile. Now I've added the only change I've added this week is I've made a small change to the wild child to make uh, the wild tile to uh, make it more interesting. I say wild child. It's supposed to play wild child by the doors. That's the music that's supposed to go with that. And it's not playing right now. That's the second week in a row that happened. I don't know why. It worked in the test. But anyways, so two of, these two of these question marks that you see, two of these tiles have two questions underneath them. The first time you flip it open, if you catch that, that one, that, that uh, question mark with the other, tile, the other question on it, you're going to get the wild tile. The same as everything else, you're going to get a chance to guess as to the, the answer, and the top three answers will always get points. But in the case of the wild tile, the first person who picks it will get a special uh, opportunity as Jacuzzi comes in and gift subs Chess Comet. That's six gift subs. Thank you, Jacuzzi. And welcome, welcome, Chess Comet. So the first person who guesses correctly on the wild tile question can have now the following option. Previously, I offered that you could either keep the points that you won from that, pro from that question, or you could trade your points for what's in the mystery box. Woo! What's in the mystery box? Something good? Maybe. Something bad? Yeah, that could be. Or something neutral? Yeah, maybe. It could depend on the situation. It could affect only you. It could affect you and another person. It could affect the whole game. All right? There's all kinds of wacky stuff. It's a total curveball. You have no idea what's going to be inside of those boxes, whether it's good or bad or neutral or just crazy. All right? So it's a gamble. But last week, we didn't offer you any special incentives. So this time, to make it a little more interesting... I am now going to offer the person who gets the first correct answer on the wild tile double the points. So if still the top three people are going to score points, but if you choose not to take the mystery box, let's say the question was worth 200 points, you can cash out, skip the mystery box, and score yourself 400 points, and the second and third person who answered that question will only get 200. So that will be your option. You'll get you'll, There's a little extra incentive to keep your points this time. Or you can trade it in for the mystery box. And there are two mystery boxes. And you can pick whichever one you want. If they're both still available. Now the other option that's available is there is one called Bubble Trouble. And that is the Bubble Trouble right there. The Bubble Trouble is the only question that can only be answered by the person who, who selected it. They'll have about 20 seconds to come up with an answer. And if they get it correctly, they can wager any number of points that they have. If they don't have a lot of points, I'll let them wager up to 500. Or if they have less than 500, they can wager up to 500. So it's a great chance to, to double your stack if, you're, if you want to go for it. Um, now, it's 2019. Google exists. So by all means, feel free to Google these answers if you want. I always put a little bit of streamer content in there. And, and that's to keep you guys on your toes. And I'm going to get into the chat in just a second, guys. So I'm sorry I'm talking so much about this. I just want to make sure everybody knows the rules. Um, but you're allowed to Google if you want to. If you think you can Google fast enough before some before three people get the correct answer, then by all means do so. And also, I should let you know that the double bubble or the bubble trouble and the um, wild tile questions will be read by guest streamers. That's right, guest streamers will read you a video question. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And we're going to get started in about a minute. So make sure you're all set up and ready to go, baby. Just don't, downloaded Sonic Mania. Oh, nice. Yeah, I was watching a little bit of uh, LJ. He was giving me some good uh, white noise in the background while I was getting ready. Always pick the wild tile. You get to steal, says Joe Cal. That could very well be. You don't know what's in the... in the. I got destroyed by the mystery box. Yeah, there's all kinds of crazy things in there, guys. It's a total wild card, and it can affect anyone, not just the person picking the box. Okay, so, so be careful. Be careful when you make those decisions. I just ordered the Timbit Girl calendar. <laughs> Time to go pee. All right, go, go do your thing. 
I'll be lurking, but in uh, full support. Hey, thanks, uh, Harold Boom. I appreciate that, bro. Okay, now, before we start, there's one more thing I wanted to show you guys, just to give you a sense, and I didn't even load the bloopers and stuff. There's bloopers. We'll do that next time, guys. I mean, you cannot believe the amount of work going on behind the scenes by people in this community just to do something fun together, and that's all it is for me. And, and I really appreciate it. I do work really hard on this, but the amount of other people working hard on this as well shows me that this is something cool that, that's bringing peeps together. And, and here's a perfect example of this. Check this out, baby. Check this out. On the left, you see a ridiculous uh, collage made by Calculated Chess, an absolutely stunning collage of all kinds of cool images. He tried to incorporate every part of the show. This is one of the nicest things anybody's ever done for me. Look at that beautiful art as a, as a, a poster for the show. And on the left, it, it's a little, it's cropped a little funny. I think King Lee like did this with his fingers uh, on his phone, like finger cropped it. And he did, under the circumstances, I think he did amazing work. You know, so so like you got to suspend your disbelief here and pretend there's not those little little bits of gray between the leg and stuff like that. But he did a really good job carefully preserving this artwork, which was made by Tactical Mist. And if you don't know what this is, it's a stripper pupusa. All right. It's it's a delicious El Salvadorian dish. All right. If you eat too many of them, it will make you really fat. And, and you must eat many of them because they're incredibly addictive. All right. And that is a stripper pupusa, which I won during Trivia Night on the Kingly Bingley Show. So I just wanted to show you guys that, to show you just how much work and coolness is going on behind the scenes to make these shows happen. So thank you so much to Tactical, Kingly, and to Calculated Chess for that freaking amazing artwork. I really appreciate that. Try to stay on for a little bit. I can't stay too long. I have to work in the morning. Gotcha, LJ. No problem. No problem, guys. I know it's a little bit late for some of you. Okay. Blazer is in the house. Welcome, welcome. Blazer made it. Holy cow. <laughs> Moscatel says shaving between the legs. <laughs> Don't get me kicked off of your Moscatel. I would definitely eat some uh, curtido off of her. <laughs> okay, guys. So if you're ready, folks, let's get this puppy underway. Now, I do not. Let me just check the. Okay, let me just check the chat quickly. I do not see Mr. Doran in the house. I do not see Mr. Doran in the house, so let's see who else we've got. I do see Jacuzzi. I think that Jacuzzi is the only former winner in the chat. So as such, I am going to allow Jacuzzi the right to choose first. And let's see if we can start unlocking these categories. Keep in mind, three questions in each category... As we get through these questions, you will unlock new categories, and then you'll know what you know v values are remaining um, within that category. So let's get this baby rolling. Jason says one e four. You can choose like a, b, c, or d four if it was your turn, but unfortunately, there is no e four. A4 says Jacuzzi. All right. Let's find out what is under A4. I'm going to get that music back on for you guys. Just make sure those volumes are okay. A4, we have more streamer mashups. Streamer mashups and the dollar figure. I didn't put the dollar figure on these on these cards, so I, I can do it manually like this. But I'm not going to do that every time for you guys. All right, so it, it, I'm just going to tell you have to tell you guys the values because it's just too much work. So my bad about that. But at any rate, we do have. Where are we here? Sorry, there's a lot of stuff up. So. Um, for 300 points. Oh, and let me get my, uh, where's my, hold on. One more second, one more second. Where is my window capture? Um, hmm. My window capture is not up. What can I do about this, guys? 
What can I do about this, guys? What can I do about this? Give me one second. Give me one second. Let's see if I can fix this up. There we go. Now we'll eliminate Mr. Doran because he is not in the house. All right. For 300 points. This friendly streamer is sometimes called The Word. And this partnered streamer did a month-long charity drive for endometriosis research. Peace! The category is streamer mashup. What I want you to do is mash the two streamers together as indicated in the clue. First three answers get 300 points. Hey, Mad Ranner's in the house. What's up? <laughs> Mad Ranner's already dancing and jumping on beds. I only know half of it, says Brooklyn. Oh, dip. Harlem Knight Coach Knight, says Moscatel. Moscatel's got the right idea. He's trying to mash two streamers. Okay. Brooklyn's going with Knight Coach. Jacuzzi's saying Harlem Coach. Absurd Knight, says Kingly Bingley. Coach Harlem Knight. Ferd Knight, says Moscatel. All right. All right. I only take first answers. So just to let you guys know, I'll only take first answers. Chess Harlem, says Joe Cal. All right. Those are my go-to things, says Mad Rancher. What, dancing on, dancing and jumping on your bed? Let's see. How many do we got so far? Just give me the points anyway, says Moscatel. Cat Ogori, is that an Irish cat? <laughs> there, there was uh, O Canada was trading uh, trending today. O apostrophe Canada on Twitter for some reason. Harlem Chess Night Coach, he's just throwing everything out there. <laughs> chess coming in with a chess comment coming in with the cheers. All right, I see only. Let me see. I see two correct answers. Ladies and gentlemen, the answer is... Ferd, Ferd the Knight or Harlem the Absurd or any combination of those two people. I was looking for Ferd the Absurd is the word and Harlem Knight did the month-long endometriosis charity stream. So we got points up for Kingly Bingley and Moscatel. Let me just double check that. Hold on for a second. Kingly Bingley. Moscatel, that was your second answer. I can't give you points on that, man. I'm going to give the points to Kingly, man. I'm going to give the points to Kingly Bingley. Scores a big 300 points. He's got run of the board, and he's the only guy that scored any points that time. Ooh, I tried to make these tricky for you guys. I really did. Because I figured you guys would know all the streamers and their catchphrases. Going over the top, digging up your grass for a green screen. Hope it does not soil your stream. Oh, the, the background there? Yeah, it's kind of a turf, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> all right, Kingly, man. Kingly's got run of the board. I would have thought I'd see Harold Bloom on Twitch. Kingly's going with B4. Let's see what we got on B4, folks. We've got more Canadian delicacies. Before what, says uh, Brooklyn? Before 4. You guys ever see that band before? Before 4, it's, it's, it's the, the worst boy band that ever existed. And I got this buddy from Hawaii that's always like sending me like uh gifts of before four it's awful just, just do yourself a favor and uh, don't don't even google it canadian delicacies for 200 let's see this answer here's your clue 
derived from a Gaelic word meaning morsel. This quick bread, that's a typo, but it's supposed to say popular with indigenous peoples of Canada, can be fried in a pan or baked in a griddle. What is the Canadian delicacy? Fry bread, says Jacuzzi. Of course, fry bread. That makes sense. Fry bread. Brooklyn's going fry bread. Sure. Joe Call says Nan. Hmm. What is the Canadian? Don't don't forget that Google is your friend, folks. Google is your friend. Four four. You must eat that group. Oh my God, Brooklyn, you're on a roll tonight. <laughs> Raptor Jacks. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, did I mention that I give points for funny answers? So if you don't know, by all means, give a funny answer. And I also sometimes have follow-up answers. So that's 100 points for funny answer for, for Harlem Night. Oh, I'm stopping you guys so far. One cannot forget LFO when speaking of the worst boy bands. I don't know who LFO is. I, I, I'm scared to know. I'm scared to know, Matt. Note to self, don't always copy the first answer you see. Um, I'll tell you, Kowalski's done pretty good with that technique. But doesn't always work. Muscatel's going with Bannock. Google it. I don't know. Fried dough is a fave of mine. Mm. Yeah, fried dough is delicious. Any more guesses before we find this answer? O Town. Yeah, O Town was pathetic. O Town is exactly the same thing. Liquid Dreams. Okay, and then like uh, before Four has got another song like that. So this is pathetic. Those are two of the worst boy bands ever in history. Absolutely. All right, and I'm open to suggestions for other boy, bad boy bands, but I mean, they're all pretty bad. I mean, the hard part would be figuring out who's the best boy band. Uh, Barnbrack says Jacuzzi. Canadian white bread. So the answer, folks, is... The answer is Bannock and Moscatel was smart this time and he went and Googled it and Moscatel was the only guy that scored points on that one. For 200 points, Moscatel is on the board. Wow. A rough start. You guys are troopers, man. These guys are like, I'm not going to Google this. These guys are all on their honor trying to do this all by themselves. I'm impressed and, and uh, Moscatel is going to get run of the board. I just Googled it and I found nothing of that word. Ah, I've tried very hard to make these, these difficult for you guys. Very, very hard to make these difficult. Bannock for the record is an absolutely delicious thing. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, if you get real native Bannock, you know, maybe fried with some onions or something. It's just it's heavenly stuff. I forgot Googling was a thing. Yeah, exactly. I like girls who wear Amber Chromie and Fitch. Chinese food makes me sick. Oh my god. Come on. Chinese Chinese food makes me sick. That can't really be a real lyric. Oh, it's so good, Harlem. You gotta try it. It's so delicious. Moscatel is going D2. Alright. Let's keep this game rolling. D2. You're watching Fish Slapperty. It's Friday night. How's everybody doing tonight? Hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Let's find out we got what we got under D2. And it looks like we've got more streamer mashups. And this one is for 100 points. It is really their song. Oh my God, that's awful. That is truly awful. Mash these two streams together and you might get some Canadian GMs playing Bullet to the tune of Viva La Vida. Hmm. Hmm, Canadian GMs, Viva La Vida. Fantastic Fish Slapperty Friday, that's right, Harold, that's exactly what it is. Chessa Morris is jo Joe Call. Say the question again, absolutely. Mash these two streams together, and you might get some Canadian GMs playing Bullet to the tune of Viva La Vida. You've never heard of the song Viva La Vida. JPS Bros is Kingly. Chess Nakas is. Uh, 
uh, Brooklyn. All right. Uh, the, one, of, one of the fun things about the mashup is trying to hear you guys figure out how to mash those two streamers' names together. Braz and Bigfoot. Okay. Eric Hambledon. <laughs> I'm stumped, says Jacuzzi. Hmm. Ah, ah, I'm getting you guys with these ones today. I'm really screwing you guys. I'm get screwed the first three questions. I'm taking everyone to the cleaner. This is great. I see no correct answers yet. Ricky Sinatra. I'd mash a couple of streamers. Oh my. Oh my goodness. That, that is a fish slap right there. That is a fish slap, Jacuzzi. Okay. And that was D2. <laughs> well, it is Friday night, you know. The correct answer, folks. Whoops. The correct answer is... Cold Bra, 1992. Or Chess Player Bra. Alright, it's a mashup of Cold Player 1992. Of course, Cold Player is playing Bullet and listening to Cold Play. Who else would be doing that? And who else has Canadian GMs? Only the, uh, the Chess Bras. That is a big old goose egg, folks, and that means the Moscatel is going to get a chance to pick again. We take a break about halfway through, so nine questions in. We're a third of the way to our break. It gives people a chance to go get some some uh, uh, frothy beverages and some uh, some nachos and popcorn, go to the bathroom, you know, take a little stretch and all that kind of stuff. Burkout, you are too deep. I know, man. These, uh, these mashups are hard. These mashups are very hard. The first one I did was like super easy. You guys got them all in like seconds. You know, so you guys have to like, if you guys want easier mashups, you have to come up with more catchphrases and stuff. More like, you know, specific things about yourselves that I can like use. Otherwise I gotta do these done ones. I'm done copying, it's failed me twice, going for funny now, all right. Only the brave dare mix cheese, chest and cold play. That's right. All right, Moscatel. If Moscatel is in there, he's going, uh, where did he say? D3, all right. Let's see what we got under D3. We've got, category is more, more, and more. Pay attention to the spelling. More, more, and more. And the question is, the Moorish invasion beginning in 711 AD ended the Visigoth kingdom and gained control over this peninsula named Hispania by the Romans. What peninsula is that? Okay, I'm glad you guys are getting all the hard ones out of the way early. Okay, because they're not all like this. But you guys are getting some hard ones today. The hard ones are fun. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta make it a little challenging. There's some guys that'll run away with this if I if I make them too easy. I have a lot of catchphrases, yeah, but you're not a streamer, Mad. So maybe I can do like a viewer. Maybe that's a fun one, a viewer uh, category. And maybe we could do like in the Discord, we could do like a, a special channel just for like ideas for what's in the mystery box and ideas for categories that we could do. Right? That would be a lot of fun. There's also people I've got that are going to write some categories for me. And of course, we've got, don't forget, folks, we have four, count them, four video streamers doing questions for us tonight. You're not going to believe these guys. You're not going to believe what you're going to see tonight. Just you wait, baby. Do a few more one-liners into your night, bot. All right. <laughs> Bad Ranchers catchphrases are, are NSFW. <laughs> um, Moscatel says Iberia. Jason Pierre Sweeney says Iberia. Okay. Kingly says Italy. 
Just Comet says Sicily. Brooklyn going Italy. Joe Cal saying Sicily. Iberian Peninsula says Jacuzzi. This was for 300 points, guys. And the correct answer is the Iberian Peninsula. That is absolutely correct. And I thought that more people would say Spain because I, I use that word Hispania, which is the correct Roman name for that peninsula, which actually can, like, includes Spain and Portugal. So I'm not really surprised if Moscatel got that, and he did. He was the first one that got that. So I'm Moscatel, JPS, and Kuzi. Moscatel, 300. JPS is on the board, 300 smackaroonies. And Jacuzzi is on the board with 300. And Moscatel, oh, Moscatel was already on the board, never mind. Moscatel was already on the board. So Moscatel's in the lead right now, and he also gets to pick first, because he got that one first. He's running the he's running the table right now, guys. Mad Rander says, I am a streamer. You're a steamer. You're a steamer. You might even be a stripper, but you're not a, you're not a streamer. So, so LJ did say Spain. Okay. <laughs> My DNA can be traced back to, to Iberia. Is that right? Really? My sister did a, a DNA test and uh, found some really interesting... Uh, a little bit of Northern Africa, a little bit of Asia, all sorts of bizarre places that we wouldn't have expected. It was, it was interesting. Very small amount. It was mostly uh, Western uh, Europe, France, and... Germany, some Spain, different things like that. My DNA is traced back to the more. That's cool, man. They were originally from North Africa, and they went on a on a conquest through the a caliphate through the uh, um, through the European countries. Thrown off by the Romans, exactly. That's why I made that one a three hundred. I was trying to make that one a little bit tough. Okay, Muscatel's going C four. Uh, no, Jason, you got that second, so Muscatel gets that one again. And he's going C4. All right, let's see what we got under C4. Still a lot of interesting tiles out there. And what's under C4? Oh, snap! It's a wild tile. It is a wild tile, baby. All right, so let's see what's going on here. What do we have on C4? That is the green wild tile, okay. So again, this is how it works, folks. This is really important because there's only two of these on the, on the whole board. The first three people, like normal, will get some points for this. This one is worth 200 points. The first person to guess this correctly will have a choice to either take double the points, so 400 points, or you can trade your 400 points in for what's in one of the two mystery boxes. All right? What the hell is in them? I don't know. I can't tell you. It could be anything. Something really terrible. Something really good. Someone, something that affects everyone. Something that affects only you. Who knows? It could be anything. So get yourself ready. And here is your clue for the wild tile. And the category, by the way, is more streamer mashups. More streamer mashups. And here's your clue. This Bangladeshi streamer recently scored a 1900 plus performance rating at an OTD tournament. And this Twitch singing chess streamer recently started playing Kerbal Space Program. Oh man, I made that such a tough category this week. I'm feeling bad now. Can't hear him over the music. Okay, let me turn down the music. Let me turn down the music. Let me turn down the music so you guys can hear him again. This Bangladeshi streamer recently scored a 1900 plus performance rating at an OTB tourney. And this Twitch singing chess streamer recently started playing Kerbal Space Program.
That was a little unfair because I, I had the music on there. I just don't want to bore you guys with the drone of my voice in between the, the videos and stuff. So I, I had the music on, but I should have I should have put that down. I will sing the Wild Tile Anthem instead of the Doors. That would be awesome. Please do. If you send me that, I will absolutely put that up, King Lee. I actually really enjoyed your monster, your Space Jam uh, uh, hit him high. It was hilarious. C4 is explosive. Boom, there goes the dynamite. I need a terrible mystery box. So we've got KB Khan, Khan Ron, Khan Ra, Khan Me. <laughs> Says Brooklyn Khan Me. A KBK Ra. I knew I was going to trick you guys with this one. Jacuzzi says KB Schwab. KBBK says uh, Kingly Bingley. Shikan says Chess Comet. LJL Trout. Hmm. I'll give you 100 points for that. I'll give you 100 points for that one, LJ, for a for funny, uh, funny answer. I will be back, says Matt Rander. All right, all right. Have a good one if we don't see you again. Okay. Let's see if we got three right. Um, C4, the correct answer, folks, is KB Schwobi or Schwobi Khan or something of the likes. I knew you guys would say Brooklyn Raw, but does Brooklyn Raw do Twitch sings? I don't think so. Sorry. All right. That was your clue. That was your clue on that one. The correct answer is Schwobi. And KB Khan. So the two people who got that one right are Jacuzzi and Chess Comet. But Chess Comet said some other people first, so I got to I gotta go Jacuzzi. I just gotta give it to Jacuzzi. Now, Jacuzzi. That was for 200 points. So we're gonna double it to 400. Now the question is, Jacuzzi, would you like to keep the 400 points? Or would you like to trade them in for what's in one of the mystery boxes? Jacuzzi gifted a sub to Kingly Bingley. Oh, I didn't get the notification for that. Ah, crud. Thank you so much, Jacuzzi. I don't know why I didn't get the notification for that. I'll put my volume up a little bit here, see if that works. Be right back. Need to see a monkey. All right. We got all three mashups wrong. Yeah, I screwed you guys on the mashups. I screwed you guys. I'm running out of mashups. I'm going to have to do something differently. That was a tough one. Can't make the decision. I'd be ripping my hair out if I had any. <laughs> <laughs> tough yeah i wanted to make it a little tougher on you guys for the for the mystery boxes who knows what's gonna happen carlin's back all right <laughs> brad pitt voice what's in the box what's in oh my god that was a good movie dude seven is a good movie i like that movie and i know that some stuff has happened since then but uh boy kevin spacey is a hell of an actor and brad pitt man brad pitt is a good actor dude Great stream, Circle Me Bird. Gonna head out, work in the AM, and run in a fever. Oof. Okay, Tactical. Hey, thank you again. Let's give one more uh, look at the uh, Tactical Stripper Papusa. That's right, baby. The Stripper Papusa. Oh, yeah. Don't she taste so good? Jacuzzi says the box. Well, you've got two boxes. Do you want the top box or do you want the bottom box? Top box is box number one. Bottom box is box number two. Which one do you want? He's going to go for it, folks. He's trading in his points. So let's let's erase those 400 points. Okay. And let's see what he gets out of the out of the mystery box. The bottom one, please. All right. 
Jacuzzi is a bottom. <laughs> Let's go for the uh, bottom box and find out what you got. Cash is nice, but you didn't win any. Trade points with another player within 1,000 points of your current score. This is not optional. Kingley's got 300. Harlem's got 100. Muscatel has 500. JPS has 300. You've got 300. And Leeches has 100. Someone is going to get your points and you're going to get theirs. Muscatel points. You got it. Muscatel, you now have 300 points. And Kuzi Kabuzi has just taken the lead. He's got 500 points. That could have been a lot bigger had it been later in the game. But that still turns out pretty good for Kuzi. <laughs> and Jacuzzi, you've also got run of the board. So it's also your turn to choose a category. Now, keep in mind, folks, there is still a question underneath that. So let's put that... Let's put that um, point back up. Is that was C4? Let's put that back up. All right. So C4, there's still a question there. And Kuzi's going with A1. All right. Let's see what we got on A1. A1, we've got more, more, more for 200 points. Let's see your clue. This diminutive English actor won two Golden Globes for his roles in Mickey and Maude and Arthur. Hmm. Does, is anybody old enough to remember this? Jason says Dudley Moore. Brooklyn says Dudley Moore. Moscatel, Dudley Moore. Oh, everybody's on top of this one. LJ says Roger Moore. Okay, I got to give LJ 100 points. Even if, I'm not sure if he was actually joking or if that was a serious guess. But that is hilarious that you just said Roger Moore. Okay. <laughs> The correct answer is indeed Dudley Moore. That's correct. Dudley Moore. I, I was a big fan of his, man. I, I liked his movies a lot. He actually, he passed away. I think he was 66, but he he, he went in a really bad way. He had some degenerative. He had a lot of health issues in his life and stuff like that. But he was a very, uh, you know, he was funny and a charming actor. I just really, really enjoyed his movies a lot. Really liked Arthur especially. Are you too, uh, Harlem? Yeah, that's what I'm saying, right? <laughs> Chess Comet goes for Niels Bohr. <laughs> All right, Comet, I'm going to give you 100 points on that. Let's put Comet on the board. And we will give... Let's see who got those uh, uh, questions right first. Hey, Jason! That's kind of a 100-point answer. <laughs> see, Jason knows, man. I didn't know if anybody would know that because it's kind of an old reference. I also could have gone with Julianne Moore, which I thought more people would know, but I went with a. I didn't even think about Roger Moore. So we have JPS, Brooklyn Raw, and Moscatel. JPS, Brooklyn Raw is on the board. Um, wait, was that. That was 200, wasn't it? Yeah, that was 200. So hold on. Let's not rip off JPS. And who was the other person? Moscatel, right? Moscatel. And he's back tied with the lead with JPS and Jacuzzi. we got a fight on our hands here, guys. we got a good episode of Fish Slapperty going on here. We're now one, two, three, four, five, six cat, uh, questions in. JPS is going to get to pick the next category. Let's see where we're going next. Still three video answers out there, guys. Two bubble troubles and a wild tile, which I hope soon we will have Kingly Bingley singing the, the tune for. Yeah. 
<laughs> Brooklyn was riding coattails. Hey, you can do that. You can go to Google. You can ride coattails. You can do anything you want. This is a show for fun, guys. And by the way, you do get a spin of the prize wheel if you win. All right? You might get a sub to the show. You might get bupkis. You might get another spin. You might get to pick some songs that I have to play for the rest of the week. Last time, the guy had me do this, like, Star Wars lip sync song, okay, about seagulls and stuff, all right? I had to put that in my playlist, all right? There's all kinds of different things that you could win, a free chess lesson, all right? A game review, so some of those things, and you will get a spin on the prize wheel, and you'll get a chance to play in the Tournament of Champions when this is all done. It's a 10-part series. I think we're on part five here now. So Jason is going with B3. Let's see what we got. B3, B3. What is happening on B3? Let's find out. Oh, it's a bubble trouble. Look out, folks. JPS has landed on the bubble trouble. Now, let's find out what we've got here. Let's see what we've got. I'll give you the category. And now what's going to happen is you're going to get a chance to... Where are we here? B3. So the category is uh, more Canadian delicacies for 100. Now how it works is you can wager up to 500 because um, you've got 500 points. So if you would have had less, you still could have done 500. So you can wager anything from 0 to 500 in the 100 point uh, uh, question for more Canadian delicacies. For the record, guys, JPS is Canadian. So let's see if he's going big or if he's going home. What is your wager, sir? 100 points. He's going with only 100 points. All right. So we will, we will put that down. And we will see if he holds it. For 100 points, let's go to our video clue. I think I have to turn my mic off for this or I'm going to start laughing, okay? Here is your clue in more Canadian delicacies. Not only if they were those Canadian delicacies I hear about so much, filled with jam, jelly, custard, pectin, marmalade, and the legendary such and such, <laughs> would it be? <laughs> oh my God, guys. Are you kidding me? Was that the like greatest read in the history of the world or what? Harlem Knight with a cameo from Romeo, his sweet little pooch. Was that was that genius or what, guys? Come on. Come on, guys. JPS says, so I have no idea. I will say a Timbit Espresso. Um, that was for B3. The answer, of course, is Timbits. I open every single show with Timbits. So I'm going to give you that one because that was, that was close enough. You didn't have to say the flavor, but, but Timbits, of course. They're filled with jams and jellies, puddings, pectins, custards, marmalades, and such and such. Mmm, Timbits. Anybody who doesn't, who doesn't know that has never seen my show. 
But thank you so much to Harlem Knight um, and also to JPS who did the earlier uh, question. Just epic reads, guys. Come on, right? Is that cool or what? That Harlem would take the time out of his day to do that. And and just for the disclaimer, excuse me, no no offense, of course, to to Dunkin' Donuts or whoever made those those donuts. It was just purely for for a spoof, and that, and that goes without saying. But let's say it anyways, just for you know, cover our bases. What are Timbuts? Come on now, Mad. You don't know what Timbits are, seriously. And did you just call them Timbuts? Also, yes, I am a Canadian delicacy. So JPS has control over the board. He does get his 100 uh, points. So we will we'll let him keep those. And we are now on 600 points for JPS. He is in the lead, and he's got control over the board. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll do a couple more questions, and we'll take a little breather. If I still have the board, C1. All right, you got it. C1, let's find out what we got down there. C1 is, the for 100 points, the category is more chess geography. I'm going to say the name of a chess player, a famous chess player, and you have to tell me the country that they were born in. Okay? The country they were born in. For 100 points. Ramesh Babu Pragnananda. I'm hoping to see one of these answers. Brooklyn's Brooklyn's busting out the bad puns tonight. That was what the video was called, uh, uh, Bertrout. What, Timbuts? How many donuts? I'm very curious to know. And there was bloopers, guys. Like, again, the amount of work that goes into these, even the people who are doing the videos, you cannot imagine. You really can't. I hope you guys are having a fun time. Thanks for being here. If there's anybody that's watching this that's not follow, for the love of God, smash that follow button. Don't forget to go check out if there's any mods that want to shout out JPS and Harlem and these guys who are doing the, the videos. Go give these guys a follow as well, man. You know, that's what makes a community. This, this show wouldn't be cool without those guys, or without you guys, the viewers. So so hit those, hit those buttons, man. Check out the panel. Support from whatever way is within your means. All right, we got... Muscatel says India. Kingly says India. LJ, holy mackerel. Joko's got India. Brooklyn, JPS, Chess Comet. Everybody's saying India. Let's find out if you're correct. India is the correct answer. Absolutely. And for the record, I think that this guy, boy, there's a lot of talent. I think Nahal Sareen. I think Irigasi. I think there's a lot of talent out of that country. Gukesh D. But I think Pragnananda is the one that could be a world champ. I really, really do. So we got Muscatel, King Lee, and LJ. Okay. Muscatel. We've got um, King Lee on uh, with another 100. Muscatel, King Lee, and who's the other one? And LJ. Muscatel with the fast fingers today, guys. He's, he's going for this. He was in the running last time, too. So Muscatel is gaining control over the board. We'll do one more question. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we'll do one more question, and then we'll take a little five-minute break. Let everybody go on a bathroom break and get some, get some uh, cold beverages or whatever you like. Timbits going into the Timbuts. <laughs> Timbuts coming out. Blazer on fire today, man. You are on fire, sir. <laughs> Been seldom tried Pakistan. That's a good guess. That's actually a good guess. Chennai, Jacuzzi's going really uh, specific. Going Chennai, wow. Oh, yeah. India is already a beast of a country for chess, but those kids coming up, man, holy mackerel. We could end up with an all Indian world championship. That's very, very possible. And as LJ points out, you cannot spell pregnant anda without an and. Absolutely true. The Lone Ranger's companion was was uh, Indian. <laughs> Need to refresh my Jack and Dr. Pepper's is koozie. That's right. Is that what you're really having, a Jack and Dr. Pepper? I don't think I've ever had that. I am in the lead with your wins and points, says uh, Mad to Jacuzzi. Pakistan was India at some point. Whew, man, oh, man. 
Muscatel, did I miss what you what you wanted to go with? Let me just see again. He's going C3, all right. C3 is the last one before the break. We are at the halfway point, folks. Uh, let's see what we got on C3. And your topic is more world chess champions. And this is for 100 points. 100 points. Your question is, he's the longest tenured world champion at an astonishing 27 years. Hmm. Hmm. Aliekin, Aliekin, Lasky says, Jason Pierre Sweeney, Kasparov says, Vince Silden. Good guesses. Good guesses here, guys. Manuel Lasker says, Jacuzzi. Kasparov says, Chess Comet. Good guesses. Good guesses. Capablanca says, Joe Call. I actually saw someone posting a video of Capablanca. He was also in a movie, by the way. And I, if I knew the name of it, I would make it a bonus point uh, question, but I don't. Lasky says Harlem Knight. Let's see what, what the answer is. The answer is, indeed, Emmanuel Lasker. That is correct. Now, some people would claim that Steinitz became the world champion in 1866 when he played a match versus Adolf Anderson in one. However, that is in dispute. The first official contract that said within the writing of it that this was for the championship of the world of chess was his match against Sukertort in 1886 and thereby the longest official world champion is Emmanuel Lasker. So let's see who got those points. Know your history, folks. Know your history. When you're coming on, when, there's always going to be a chess category and there's going to be some kind of a streamer or viewer category. And there's usually some space. Most times there's space. Okay, so we've got Jason Pierre Sweeney was the first one to get it. He's going to pick when we come back from the break. JPS, Jacuzzi, and Harlem. JPS, Jacuzzi, and Harlem. Pick that up for 100 points. So I am going to... Whoops. I'm going to give you guys five minutes. We'll take a little breather. I'll put you on the calculated poster for a second while I... Tally up these scores.
Are you guys having... Oh can, you, oh, can you hear me now? Okay, so I didn't have the sound on. Okay, well, I wasn't saying anything too fancy. Just say that I had this five-minute break for uh, Koozie, who was asking. And I was saying Chess Fever is the movie, yeah, because he... Yeah, Capablanca actually had a line in that movie. And then, like, there, there were some other famous players in it. But anyways, um, that was the only person that... Uh, I think that had a line out of the chess players. I can't remember if it was Nidor or whoever else it was. Anyways. Yeah, I'm just talking to myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is not a prank. <laughs> I mean, I would have just... If I would have read that first, uh, Mad Rander, I probably wouldn't have even looked. Burchot's famous style of return. Yeah, I do that a lot. I know. <laughs> Oh, I got a clip by Mus Muscatel. I know he thinks I pranked him. <laughs> Not a prank by Matt, I know. I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop with Matt. Boy, did we, we caught String Dog really good one time. Like, really, really good. With, like, she, she managed to get the whole... She DM'd the whole entire chat. And the whole chat to play along. Oh, JPS gifting a sub to Vince Silden. Holy shlamolies. Welcome back, uh, Vince Silden, to the Trout sub crew. That is 84 gift subs by Jason Pierre Sweeney. That is insane, dude. Thank you so much, man. Wow. Comes on, reads an awesome question. He's in the lead on the show, and he's dropping gift subs, man. Subs and bits. Holy crap, Aroni. Can't ask for a better guy than that, man. Yeah, he's he's got a couple on you, but you're you're getting up there too, Jacuzzi. AB's got a good chunk. There's some folks out there with some gifts up, man. All right, so good button another minute, guys. And you are the video tech, yeah. Also, that's another thing is that. One of the I won't tell you what which one yet. I'll tell you guys a little bit later. But one of the one of the four videos I got today was extremely laggy, like to the point of being unwatchable. You could still hear the person in real time, but you could not see them at all. It was so bad, and I didn't know what to do. And first, JPS gave me a tip on how to make it a little bit better, which worked, but it was still pretty laggy. So it would have been okay, but it wouldn't have done justice to this really nice clip. And JPS did some sort of sorcery okay and fixed it in about two minutes in about two minutes and got it back to like the crispness that it was sent to me in because it was it was previewing normally it just wasn't working in obs for some reason and i tried every kind of tweak it took me about an hour of working on it couldn't find anything to to make it better finally went to my discord for help and jps came in like a freaking tech legend and solved that like in two minutes that was genius. That was 100% genius. JPS, I was so thankful you did that for me, man. Okay, so we've got... Jason's going with A3. Let's get back into this, folks. It's time for Fish Lapperty. Let's take one more look at that scoreboard. Moscatel, um, uh, JPS in first place, six, uh, 700. Moscatel and QZ on 600. Kingley's got 400, and there's several other people on the scoreboard. And we are going to... We're going to A3. All right. A3. What do we have here? Oh. Dun, dun, dun. It's a wild tile. It's a wild tile. That is the last of the wild tiles. And in fact, let's get those wild tiles up so everyone will know that the wild tiles have been found. Alright, so the two wild tiles have been found. Let's find out what the category is. The category is metal. More metal. Metal music. More metal music. I don't know if LJ is still out there, if he's passed out, but... If he has, he's missed the boat because this is for 200 points. 
Now again, this is a wild tile. The first person to get this correctly will have the choice to trade their doubled points. So you would get 400 if you're the first person to get this. If you get it second or third, you'll still get the 200 points. But the first person will have the choice to trade in their points if they want to for the last remaining mystery box. All right. <laughs> All right, so here we go if you're ready, folks. This is a video clue, and here is your clue in the wild tile category. Covered by Scott D. Davis on his tribute album, Pianotorium, and Apocalyptica on their cello album, Inquisition Symphony, this was Metallica's first true ballad. And against Burchard's will, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a hint. Here we go. Let me do that again. Sorry, guys. I know that was rude of me. Oh, we're going to do that one more time because I had the music playing in the background. It's really important you guys hear this. Covered by Scott D. Davis on his tribute album, Pianotorium, and Apocalyptica on their cello album, Inquisition Symphony, this was Metallica's first true ballad. And against Burchard's will, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a hint. Here we go. Good luck. Okay, sorry, that was, that was, I should have uh, set that up a little bit better. Had the music going again. Um, let's see who we've got. Metal Shredder, that's right. That was indeed Metal Shredder, a.k.a. Kaido Lupin, a.k.a. Kate. We've got Jason says one, Brooklyn Raw says one. LJ, Brooklyn Raw does not know metal, so that is a 100% coattail answer. All right, that, that is a stone cold. <laughs> I think that is literally... The only song that Brooklyn Raw knows in metal. <laughs> LJ says fade to black. Joko going one. Channing going one. We got some for uh, nothing else matters. Harlem says enter Sandman. I meant what that guy said, said Joko. <laughs> Welcome home sanitarium, says Chess Comet. One says, hey, Mr. Doran's in the house. Oh, man. Watch out, guys. Mr. Doran is in the house. Unforgiven says Vin Silden. Are you guys serious? Come on. LJ is going into the lyrics. Um, we're almost out of time here, guys. This is scandalous. The correct answer, folks, is Fade to Black. Fade to Black. I mean, he was wearing the Ride the Lightning shirt, the Metallica Ride the Lightning shirt. Um, I'm kind of surprised that more people didn't get that. We got almost every Metallica song except for the right one, other than LJ, who got it immediately and even knew the lyrics. LJ in the house, and he is going to scoop up the 200 points. which that was worth. And also LJ as the winner of the wild tile question gets to choose if he wants to, does he want to trade in his points? He'll get double the points actually. So let me, let me fix that up. So what we're talking about is either you're going to get 400 points or what's in the mystery box. Now we've already had one mystery box. It was pretty good. Is, does that mean there's something bad in the second one? Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe there's something even better. Who knows? Let's see if LJ, he says he's, he, LJ's going for it. He's a trooper. He wants to trade in those points. All right, so we're going to knock those points off. And let's find out what LJ wins. Let's find out what's in that mystery box, guys. The box of mystery. Nobody has ever been able to resist the box of mystery yet. It's impossible. It's damn near impossible. Okay. So mystery box number one. Let's open it up and see what's inside. This card lets you use a second guess once to count as your answer. Your first answer will still count if it was correct. So you could use this strategically. If at any point in time before I say the answer, you want to guess a second time 
and you turn out to be in the top three, then your second uh, choice will count. So you'll have to let me know when you want to do that. So that's kind of a, it's kind of a neutral sort of a, you know, could be good or it could be bad. <laughs> and that's what you, that's what you got for your, hey, I told you guys, man, it's a wild, it's a wild tile. It could be anything. It could be something atrocious, like lose all of your points or gain 5,000 points. It could be anything in between. But at any rate, LJ gets to make the next choice. And we will put that one back on because that was a wild tile. So that was um, that was A3. That was A3. So let's put that one back up. So there is still a question behind that one on A3. There will be another one. I'm crying, says Jacuzzi. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else matters. Wow. I gotta give I gotta put Mad Ranter on the board for that. Mad Ranter, you are on the board. That is a hundred points for for funny answer. Nothing else matters. <laughs> LJ's going with B1. All right, let's get this. Let's get this show rolling. B1. We've got more Canadian delicacies, and this was for 300 points. For 300 points, your clue is similar in nature to elephant ears. This Canadian dessert is hand stretched to remember to resemble the back end of our national animal, and topped with such things as cinnamon, Nutella, and M&Ms. Damn, that's good. <laughs> Mad Lives Matters. Oh, my God. Moose poop? <laughs> oh, wow. Brooklyn Raw is just like copying and pasting. All right. Channing's going to go with moose poop. I mean, how can I not give Channing 100 points for that? Um, no, it's not moose poop. All right. It's not moose poop. Who would eat a food called moose poop? Moscatel says a beaver tail. Vincillon says Canadian bacon. It's a good try. Fried dough. Okay. Fried dough. So you think a deer is our, our national animal? Beaver fried, says Jason. Damn, that was a joke answer. It sure was. Jacuzzi says beaver. Okay. A Canadian says Joe Call. A crepe says LJ. It's just Alanis Morissette. Wow. I actually met Alanis Morissette one time. She came into a health food store I was working in in Ottawa because her parents lived like two blocks away. So she used to come in there and get all of this. She was really into this like, you know, vegan and new agey sort of food. So I, I said something to her like she was in my section. I said, I noticed her and she smiled at me and I said something like, uh, it's cool to see you here. And, and, uh, that was about the end of our conversation. So I made a, made a, a passing comment to her. So just, just enough to let her know that it was, that I recognized her, but, but not to be, uh, you know, a gushing fan kind of thing. Ryan Reynolds. Oh my God. He is a snack. Beaver Tail says Mr. Doran. The correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, is Beaver Tails. That's correct. So let's see who got that one right. Um, somebody got it pretty fast. Moscatel got it fast. A beaver fried. All right, Jason. I'll give you that one. It's not quite right, but it's close enough. I'm going to give Moscatel, Jason, and we'll give Jacuzzi because you guys at least said Beaver. If anyone else actually said Beaver Tails correctly... I will give it to them. Mr. Doran did. So I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to put Mr. Doran on the board. For 300 points because he said the correct word. I'm going to give JPS that. For 
300. I am going to give Jacuzzi 300. And we're going to give Moscatel 300 points as we're starting to get down towards the end of the questions here, guys. Let's see what we've got here. We've got Moscatel's got 700. JPS has 1,000. Or no, sorry. Moscatel's got 900. JPS got 1,000. Jacuzzi's on 900. Um, and Muscatel's going C3. I just Googled Canadian National Animal. Yeah, I mean, I said, damn, that's good. And I spelt it D-A-M. So that was kind of your clue with that one. Neil Pert isn't our national icon. Maybe our national icon, but not our not our national animal. Channing, Channing trying to grab some, some beaver wood. You know when you talk like that, you're going to get Mad Rancher all excited. All right. Moscatel is going C3. All right. Let's see what we've got under... I think C3 is already done. I think C3 is already done. So C2. All right. C2, we have more chess geography, and this one is for 300 points. Mad Ranner says, I did start it. Who else would have started it, Matt? Hey, Duke of Prunes is in the house. What's up? We're, we're playing Fish Lapperty, guys. Still have plenty of time to get some points. Get on the board. Winner gets a spin of the prize wheel. And bragging rights for a week. For 300 points, chess geography. Where does this person come from? Arkady Nidich. Arkady Nidich. I'm looking for the country of birth. Tech Gambino's going Germany. Vincilden says Russia. Jason says Azerbaijan. Good guesses. Channing's going to go Finland. Hmm. Latvia Riga, says Jacuzzi. Earth, says LJ. That's a good guess. All right. The question is which side? Because I heard that the Earth is flat. I mean, even though we have a 3D model of the Earth that just came out, there's still some people that think the Earth is flat. Did you know that? Azerbaijan, Norway, says Brooklyn Raw. I never start anything, says Mad Ranter. You, you never start. I think you start and you finish. In a van down by the river. That's right. When you're living in a van down by the river. I gotta give Harlem some points for that. <laughs> R.I.P. Mr. Chris Farley. Boy, how I miss that guy. Chris Farley and David Spade together was like comedy gold. I really miss those guys. Wow. Dave Spade's still around. Put those guys together. Um, hmm. Well, let's find out what the answer is here, guys. Probably the best comedy duo, duo ever. They were amazing. Yeah. They captured lightning in a bottle. The correct answer, guys, is indeed Latvia. Latvia. He's represented Germany, and I believe he represents Azerbaijan right now. But the country of his birth is Latvia. That's why I put him in there, to throw you guys off the, the, the scent a little bit. So let's see who actually got that one. Who actually got that one? I see Jacuzzi. Koozie, 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 Koozie. I only see Koozie. Fat guy in a little coat. Fat guy in a little coat. <laughs> Moscatel, I see what you did there. <laughs> Didn't even get the question. I thought it was just where he lives. Yeah, and this is the second time we've had this category. So it pays to come regularly and watch Fish Lapperty and get on board. Get on the trolley, folks. So only Jacuzzi is going to get 
the big 300 points on that. That's a big move by Kuzi, and that puts him in the lead on 1,200 points. Now, Jacuzzi has won this before, and he's going to get a chance to pick the next question. We've got six left. Both of the wild tiles are done, and I believe we still have one bubble trouble left. So there's still a big, a big uh, uh, question out there where you could get a lot of points and wager it big, and no one else can catch you on that question. Tricky, tricky. Too early for me for this kind of 250 questions. Ha ha. Ooh, sneaky, eh, Mr. Doran? You said USSR, but that's really not um, quite right. First of all, I don't believe that he was born in the USSR. I think he was born in the Soviet Union because the uh, USSR would have been 1991. But in particular, he was born in the country of Latvia. So that's a good guess, to be fair. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 100 points to put you on the board, uh, Vin Silden. I'll give you 100 points to put you on the board. But we're going to give Jacuzzi a run of that board. Channing is happy. Now he can participate. There you go. Those points belong to me, says Mad Rander. We'll see. We will see. <laughs> Mad Rander is stealing points. Kuzi says A2. All right. Well, let's see what we got under A2. A2, we have got more world chess champions, and this one is for 300 points. 300 points world chess champions. Do you know your world chess champions? Let's find out. This Uzbekistan-born world chess champion beat top players like Ivanchuk, Topolov, Mickey Adams on his way to winning the 2004 FIDE knockout tourney. Uzbekistan-born world chess champion. Won the FIDE knockout in 2004. Who am I talking about? Tech Gambino goes Califman. Excellent guess. Brooklyn says Borat. Okay, well, that's... He's nice. He's very nice. Uh, that's got to be worth 100 points. Vladimir Egan. The Manchurian candidate. <laughs> Good movie, by the way. Very good movie. Anything with Denzel is going to be good. I defy you to tell me a single bad Denzel movie. The real question is, what was his best movie? I mean, he's got two Academy Awards, right? But he probably could have had a bunch. He's like Meryl Streep. You could just give him the award every year. But then what's the point of having the show? Let's see who we've got. We've got Borat, Tal, Botvinnik, Jose Capablanca... Uh, Kalifman, Kazimzanov, JPS, Topolov, Anand, Rustam Kazimzanov, Ponomariov. These are great guesses. Caruana's trainer, says Joe Call. You're on the right path. Rustam, I forgot about him. I don't know this one, says Kuzi. Spell it wrong the first time. Those FIDE KO champs don't even count. That's right. That's why I put this in there, Tech Te Gambino. I put that in there just to throw you guys again. This was during the time that the PCA was split from FIDE. And this took place over like a decade. Gary Kasparov and Nigel Short split from the from FIDE and started their own association called the Professional Chess Association and did not compete for many years. In fact, the 2004, I believe, was supposed to be to, to decide a um, challenger to Kasparov in a reunification uh, match, which never actually took place. At least not, not from, uh, from that tournament. So at any rate, the correct answer is Rustam Kazimzanov. So let's see who got that one right. Moscatel had it. Moscatel, Harlem. Moscatel, Harlem. And Mr. Doran for 300. Ooh, Moscatel making a big move on Jacuzzi. 1,200. For Moscatel, 1,200 for Jacuzzi. JPS has got 1,000 points. And lots of other guys still in the running. Harlem's catching up with 600 points. There is still a bubble trouble out there. 
That one, I believe, was Moscatel again. It was. It was Moscatel. Moscatel's got run of the board. You usually make moves in the jacuzzi. So that 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 um, that song that I was talking about from uh, before four earlier. If you guys want to go check it out, I don't remember what it's called, but in the chorus, at one point in time, the guy says, "I'm gonna make you come over to my house," and he purposely stalls after that word. Okay, and then like this guy did this like spoof song, this hilarious cartoon spoof song on before four. Now that is better than the actual song. And, and let me just say that there's a jacuzzi involved. All right? I won't tell you how the rest of the song goes. But go check it out. Uh, Muscatel says, K4, kaboom. Down to our last five questions, guys. Let's see what we got under C4. Um, C4, I believe, is... More metal. And this one is for 300. 300 big smackaroonies, baby. And the question is... This polarizing band's music is a combination of heavy metal and J-pop, known as Kawaii. Their debut album sold over 100,000 copies in Japan alone. Where's LJ? I know LJ knows this. Osmium, says Brooklyn. <laughs> now we need Evil Rookie here. Vince Hilden says Baby Metal. Joe Call says, huh? Hmm. Mad Rander says Baby Metal. Okay. Okay. I have no idea, says LJ. That's because, LJ, I suppose I would say it's because you're an actual metal fan. I mean, I loathe to call this band metal, but I every once in a while you got to throw in a, a question for the young peeps, all right? You know, the young peeps have a right to, to, to have their own culture as well. This is for all you young peeps out there. Lady Baby, says Jacuzzi. Lady Baby. Jabby metal, says Joe Kyle. Fudge poops. Hmm. Kieri Pamu Pamu. I don't even know what that is, man. Kawaii Core, says Harlem. We're looking for the band. Gangnam Style Guy? That's a good guess. It, it, it's the heaviest metal, says Brooklyn. So the, the answer is, guys, and let's just... Uh, Let's pull that answer up. There it is. Baby metal. That is correct. Just go check them out once. All right. And give me your opinion as to whether you think they're metal. It's basically, it's basically uh, a female boy band. It's a bunch of girls that were put together for the exclusive purpose of, you know, making this sort of genre. The only thing that kind of makes them legitimate is that they're, they've actually got a good band. They actually have real musicians to back them up. Okay, I don't know if you can really call this metal, but at any rate, they do sell a lot of albums, and they're called Baby Metal. So there you go. Let's find out who got those points. Mad Ranter got in there. Vincilden, Mad Ranter, and JPS. Vincilden, Mad Ranter. Whoops. Yeah, Vincilden, Mad Ranter, and JPS. Oh, got 300 points on that. Ooh, that was a big move by JPS, too. Puts him at 1,300. Is he in the lead now? I think that just put JPS in the lead. What the hell is Baby Metal? You got to go check him out, Channing. All right. Uh, I'll tell you right now, Led Zeppelin is a lot be better than Baby Metal. All right. If you got a problem with Led Zeppelin, boy, you're, you're going to hate that band. They open for Judas uh, Priest. Yeah, I mean, they make a lot of money, man. They, they sold a lot of copies in North America, too. If you, if you, I mean, it's not my style, but, 
you know, if you're into that genre, I, as again, these are, they're pretty talented, not my style, but good music. It's actually good. The musicians are high quality musicians. That's all I'll say about that. J-pop over metal riffs. Yeah, that's what it is. Exactly. Where I'm from, baby metal is just child abuse. <laughs> um, Vince Silden got that one. So Vince Silden gets to pick the next. Somehow I believe Zeppelin might be better than them. Yeah, just go check out the uh, a, a link um, after the show and, and you'll see what they're all about. So Vince Silden, you've got run of the board. We've got four questions left. Coming to a close, folks. We're going to find out very soon who's going to get the spin wheel. And we still have a bubble trouble remaining. Someone is going to have a chance to bet it all and go big or go home. Let's find out. Vincilin is going to go with D1. Okay. Um, D1. And the answer to D1 is... The Bubble Trouble! Blurp. The bubble and the trouble, and Vince Silden is going to have a chance to make a decision. He's got 400 points, and you're allowed to bet up to 500 points. Or you can bet zero. Now, I'll give you the category. Now let's go back to D1 here. I'll give, give you the category, and then you can make a decision. You have about 20 seconds. Feel free to use Google if you want. If you can do it fast enough. The question is... More world chess champions. It's the 200 point answer, but you can bet anywhere from 0 to 500. Let's see what Vince Silden wants to do here. Jacuzzi blurps. Everyone giving me a blurp. 0 to 500. What do you think, Vince Silden? World chess champs. How well do you know your world chess champs? This is only Vince Silden can answer this. He's going to go for 100 points. Okay. So for 100 points. If you get it right, if you get it wrong, you'll lose 100 points. And the answer is, oh, this is a video one, so let's go to the video clue. Here is your video clue for Vince Silden. What's going on, everybody? It's Calculator Chess here. So your question for tonight is, Capablanca famously went undefeated for eight years. From February 1916 to March 1924, spanning 63 games, right? Surprisingly, this world champion once went nine years without a single loss. Okay. Vince Silden, that was our friend, Calculated Chess. What do you guys think of these productions? We got Kaido playing a riff from Fade to Black. We got uh, uh, Calculated putting on a show. We got Jason Pierre Sweeney. Uh, he actually did three questions to make sure we had enough. And we had uh, Harlem with that with that whole epic, you know, spitting out the Dunkin' Donuts. Come on, guys. Let's give a round of applause for these guys, man. Putting on a show for you guys, the viewers. All for your personal enjoyment so that you can wind down at the end of a, a tough work week and relax with the crew and have some fun. Right? I like the video production effort for the show. Yeah, man. That's what I say. You know, give, give those guys a shout out and give those guys a follow as well. If you're not following my show, hit that follow button. Show some love for the people who put this on. There's a lot of work going on. I didn't even show the bloopers and stuff today. There's bloopers, guys. All right? But let's just make sure and see what happens, um, what Ben Silden had to say. Has to be Fisher if it's calculated. Vince Silden's going to guess Fisher. The correct answer, folks, is... Let's go find the correct answer. The correct answer is... Wilhelm Steinitz. Wilhelm Steinitz once went nine years without losing a game of chess. Now, to be fair, this was back in the 1800s, and he only played 23 games over those years. He took a couple of hiatus. But it did include a 7-0 World Championship win over, I believe it was Henry Joseph Blackburn. 
So he went went nine years longer even than Capablanca without a single loss. So Van Silden is going to lose 100 points. But that's not so bad. It's not so bad. He's down to 300 points. And we've got three questions left, and you get to pick the next category as well. Van Silden says who? That's right, Wilhelm Steinitz, your first world chess champion. Mad Rander claps and jumps on the bed. Did the Raptors win? Yeah! Ow! Sorry, guys. Sorry if I screamed in your ear. Yes, Raptors! Oh, yeah! Oh, my God. I can't wait to see the, the crying Golden State guys. They pumped all of their dudes full of pain pills. They brought back three injured guys to play tonight. They all came back on the same day, pumped them full of pain pills. They were up early, and they still lost. That is so freaking awesome. Steinitz, he has a... <laughs> I didn't see that. That's actually really funny. And, and for the risque comedy, I'm going to give you 100 points. Steinitz, he hasn't lost a game in a long time. <laughs> I'm going to give you 100 points for that. We, we, we don't mind a little dark humor on the on the Trout Show sometimes. Calculated is in the house, and he's got that s small streamer squad. Give the man a follow for that. Did you guys see that production, man? That was freaking epic. He put out this uh, this poster for me. Look at that beautiful poster on the left that he made for me, and on the right is the, the stripper pupusa as made by beautiful uh, tactical uh, miss, uh, Mrs. Uh, Kingly Bingley. So she did some excellent work as well. But look at that thing on the left. Look at that. Work, you do not know how much work went into making that collage. That's one of the nicest things anybody ever did for me. Right there. My, my boy uh, calculated chess, man. Gotta, gotta, gotta love that, man. You know, who, who does that? So thank you so much, man. Um, Vince Silden um, says A3. Okay, let's see what we got under A3. We're down to our last few questions, guys. We're almost done. We're going to find out who's going to get a spin on that prize wheel. Scores are up on the board. Um, oops, not, not the right one. That's from our previous one. All right, so we got the category is more, more, more. Pay attention to the spelling. The correct answer will have one of those words in it. And this is for 100. She starred in movies such as E.T. the Extraterrestrial and Firestarter and was married to Tom Green. Jason Pierre Sweeney says Drew Barrymore. Kingley says Julianne Moore. Uh, Joe Call says Demi. Wow, you guys are really pulling up the references. I didn't even think of some of these folks. Demi, Drew, Drew, Drew. The correct answer is, indeed, Drew Barrymore. That's right. Drew Barrymore was married to Tom Green, who some people say I looked like Tom Green, or a once upon a time I did, maybe if it was a little bit of a goatee. All right, and from like a side profile, okay, you can see that. A little bit of Tom Green in there. I've also been told I look like the bassist from uh, Blur. So let's see who got those points. Hey, Lucy, what's up? Lucy Moody is in the house Jason Pierre Sweeney is going to get uh, picked next. Jason Channing and, and... Oops, Jason Channing and Jacuzzi. Jason Channing and Jacuzzi for 100 points. Channing coming in late, and he's got, he's got 300 points already. Uh, 1,000, 1,400 for JPS. Oh, man. Looks like JPS is still in the lead, guys. JPS looking for a spin on that prize wheel. And he also gets to pick first. Daddy, would you like some sausage? Daddy, would you like some? I, I like those <laughs> Tom Green movies. I liked, uh, I liked Freddy Got Fingered. I like some of his, his movies, man. He's funny. He's a really, really funny guy. I recently saw him. He was in Japan. He was doing a tour, a comedy tour. And he, he went for uh, lunch with Andy Milanakis. And he just started wandering around in Japan being hilarious. He, he's still funny, that guy. And uh, I used to see him in, in Ottawa. 
In fact, people used to stop me in the street and literally I am absolutely dead serious. People would stop me in the street and ask me for my autograph and they would swear that I was Tom Green. I couldn't convince them otherwise. <laughs> Jason's going with D4. We're down to our last two questions, guys. Holy mackerel. We got a contest, man. This is still anybody's game. Maybe not anybody's, but there's several people in contention. D4, we have got more chess geography. And this is for 200 points. Chess geography for 200 points. A Wander Liang. I want the country of their birth. A Wander Liang. Channing says, I'm the man. No, I'm not. And then Duke of Prunes backs that up. <laughs> Demi Moore is hot. Yeah, I agree. I, at the time, I was dating a girl who was the same age, older than me, as Demi was to Ashton. And they used to call us Demi and Ashton. I think she was 47. I was 27 or something like that. Mad Ranner is crying because she says she got it right. You must have got it right too long. Freddy Got Fingered is a classic. I know it is. That was a great movie. And what was the other one? Road Trip? That was a good movie too. Remember that skinny guy and, and, and that big old girl he was with? That was, that was a good movie, man. Those are good movies. Channing says South Korea. Jacuzzi says USA. Joe Call says America. South Korea. Oh, man. We got all kinds of America, says Harlem. The correct answer is absolutely America. That is exactly where he was born. A Wander Liang. He's a young gentleman, and he's extremely talented. Him and Jeffrey Zong, and there are some very, very, very talented Burke and Sevian and all these really talented Americans coming up through the ranks, man. So watch out if you're Wesley So and Carrie Wan, because there's other guys on your heels. So we got Jacuzzi. Jokal and Moscatel. Kuzi, Jokal, and Moscatel. Kuzi, Jokal is on the board. Jokal is on the board and Moscatel. Ooh. Moscatel, 679, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Jacuzzi, 11, 12, 13, 14. is in the front with 1,500. Moscatel, 1,400. JPS, 1400 holy smokers it's going to come right down to the very last question and since there's only one we're going to go straight to the source no more other options and the category is is that right b2 more metal for 100 points for 100 points to the top three players OMG, guys. This is our, the most exciting finish we've ever had. This is the closest finish we've ever had. Whew. Let's just, let's just uh, you know, let's just ice the kicker here for a second, all right? Let's just ice the kicker for a second, okay? Let's just ice the, kick, the kicker. Let's all calm down with a nice, a nice uh, warm box of Timbits. Mmm. Mmm. Jam. Yeah. Oh, mmm. Yum. Timbits. Okay. Mad Runner's a little behind. <laughs> Goosey cheered one. JP had the first answer. Um. The Slapperty music. JPS, Kuzi, and Jokal? Wait, what's going on here? Did I get the points wrong? Let me see that again. Uh, Jason, you're right. Jason did have it first. I'm sorry. You're absolutely right. Yeah, Jason got that, so it was Jason. You're right. Jason, Kuzi, and Jokal. Jason, Kuzi, and Jokal. All right, fair enough, fair enough. 
My bad. I'm sorry, guys. I totally missed. He was so fast that I actually completely missed that. So we'll give that. We'll straighten that out. So we'll give 1,000, 13, 14, 15, 1,600 to JPS. 1,200 for Moscatel. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 1,500 for Kuzi. So that does put JPS in the lead. Okay, so so thanks for clarifying that, guys. My, my bad. I apologize. My apologies. Omed says Warriors in seven. I mean, Omed was talking Warriors in six. I said Raps in, in six. So that might turn out to be true. But I'm thinking now Raps in five. I mean, they were no match for us. They're just no match. You know. All they can do is chuck threes. They got Steph Curry, but that's about all they got. They got no bench. We're, we're a better team across the board. We got Kawhi. It was no contest. Raps and we're probably going to be Raps in five now. It was the last question of the day. Um, B, let's just make sure we're on the right question here. B2 for 100 points. Let's find out who's going to win this thing, baby. Medal for 100 Nobody wants him. They just turn their heads. Nobody helps him. Now he has his revenge. I am Aquaman. Vengeance from the brine. Swim too near, he'll break your spine. Plotting his vengeance. This guy's fucked in the head. The correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, is indeed Iron Man. Let's find out who got that one right. Paranoid was the best. Black uh, Black Sabbath album. I love every song on that album. It was one of my favorite. I didn't get into Black Sabbath till way later. I wasn't into those like dark, you know, you know, uh, Hail Satan. Uh, I wasn't into those kinds of bands at all. Okay, so I came late to the game on Black Sabbath. But that album is stellar. It is absolutely stellar. Let's find out who got those points, baby. Let's find out. LJ was first. Kingly had it and Kuzi. LJ, Kingly, and Kuzi. So let's see here. Kingly. LJ, Kuzi. LJ got that one. So let me just see here. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we have a tie break between Kuzi and JPS, and this is the second time that this has happened. This has happened before. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put on a little music for you guys. Put on a little music for you. Okay. OMG, guys. We have a tie break. Album is Paranoid. Song is Iron Man. Correct. A song you love covering, really. Tony Stark says Mad Rander. I'll give I'll give Mad Rander 100 points on that, even though it's too late for it to do anything. You can still have the bragging rights, because that was pretty funny. Tony Stark. Wow. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do, folks. I'm going to put you guys on the, the tournament uh, scene here for a second. And I'm going to see if I can find... How can I do this? I hope this is not going to, like... I really hope this is going to work okay.
Okay. I didn't see what just happened there. Something something happened. Something happened. Oh, Harlem just gifted Omid. Hey, man. And Omid, I got to give Omid a VIP here. I, I don't think I can do it live. I got to do it in my... in my. Uh, they make me do it manually. But I got I to gotta pay back Omid with a, a VIP. Because he did VIP me. See, CJ got all bent out of shape about it. But he did VIP me. So I got to give the man a, a badge of some kind. All right. Well, welcome to the Trout Show. I'm glad you got those badges, Omid. Here is the question. Now, this is only for Jason Pierre Sweeney and Jacuzzi. And if you guys are ready, let me know. Jacuzzi and JPS for the spin on the prize wheel, ladies and gentlemen. Jacuzzi's ready and Jason Pierre Sweeney. I just picked the first one. This is not to be discriminatory against you guys. I literally just opened up my my document of questions and the first one that I saw is the one that I picked. So this is not, the, I write enough for about three shows at a time. So this is not to be favoritist to anybody. I have no idea if either of you guys know these answers. I'm thinking probably this favors Jacuzzi, to be honest with you. The question, the category is um, classic hip hop. And the question is, Mad Ranner is going to be so mad at this. The question is, which rapper was not a member of Wu-Tang Clan? Method Man? ODB, U God, or Royce the Five Nine. Which rapper was not a member of Wu Tang Clan? Method Man, ODB, U God, or Royce the Five Nine, JPS, and Kuzi. <laughs> Jason says Oofta. I I I I just picked the first one that I saw. Kuzi says Royce. Uh, Jason Pierre Sweeney says ODB. The correct answer is Royce to 59. Old Dirty Bastard was a member of Wu Tang. Kuzi is going to get the win on that. I feel kind of crappy because uh, Jason Pierre Sweeney was in the lead most of that game and was so generous to the show and then got totally screwed on the final question. I don't really know which question would have been to the best for you. Maybe a streamer question. I have space categories, chess stuff. Um, Canadian delicacies, right? So there's all those different kind of categories, but that was the one that came up. I literally picked the first one I saw. <laughs> Omen in the air. Harlem of Mad Rancher. You guys are like, damn. The winner, ladies and gentlemen, for a second time is going to be Jacuzzi. Congratulations. That is two wins by Jacuzzi. Jacuzzi, we still have to figure out how to get you your mug from the last time. You want a mug? And I don't know how to get you. That's the only problem I have with... That's why I've changed up the prize wheel. So now I've got subs and chess lessons and different things that don't require sharing information. That always makes me feel uncomfortable. I don't mind. I'm not, you know, I'm not coming to your house with a hatchet or anything like that. So, you know, you can rest assured. But I don't like the idea of having to ask somebody for their personal information. But if you can figure out a way for me to get you that mug um, koozie from the last time, let me know. You got is the worst member. We've had this conversation before. Who do you guys think is the best MC from, from Wu-Tang? I got to go Method Man. Okay? I'm going to go Method Man. That's the fish slap and fish slapperty. It is. Yeah. Yeah. And you guys won't believe some of the, the heinous, filthy, dirty um, mystery boxes I got, I got cooking up for you. So just watch out. Watch out for those mystery boxes, guys. We got you guys got some pretty nice easy ones today. But could have gone more on. Mad Rand is going Raekwon. I'm glad somebody says Raekwon. Because nobody ever gives Raekwon any 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 credit. I'd like to give the spin to Jason Pierre Sweeney if you might, and he'll accept. Well, if Jason accepts that, then we can do it. <laughs> Royce is fire, what do you mean? <laughs> TCAL, thank you. And TCAL's another one. Yeah, exactly. That's a great album. There's a lot of good albums out. Like, a lot of those guys have good ones, but that's one of the, the ones I really like. Uh, GZ, uh, uh, GZA, I mean, that's hard to argue with that. Best MC from Wu is GZA, also says uh, Omid. 
Uh, Ghostface Killer. These are excellent picks. Excellent picks. Oh, and also there is a death match tomorrow, by the way, guys. That is a true story between JPS and Jacuzzi. That was not just planned right now. That's been in the works for a while. So who's taking the spin of the spin wheel? Are we going to get JPS in here? Does JPS accept the spin of the prize wheel? There's things on here like picking some songs that I have to play for the rest of the week in my song, in song list. And there is uh, a sub to the show, and there is a free chess lesson, a free game review, a bunch of different things like that. All right, so we're going to go into the, give me one second here, let me go into my, uh, let me go into my widgets, I find my spin, I find my spin wheel. All right, so we are set up, and when when Mr. Jason Pierre Sweeney is ready, very generous of you, by the way, Jacuzzi, very kind of you. I greatly appreciate that. And when you're ready, Mr. Jason Pierre Sweeney, we can spin that wheel, baby. Q-tip. Q-tip was a great... Here's what people don't know about Q-tip, is he was a great producer. He produced music for a lot of really top level uh, rappers and, and groups. He was a great producer. All right, here we go, folks. Let's find out what Jason Pierre Sweeney wins on the spin wheel. This is what it's all about, baby. Oh, look at that slow roll. See how I did that, guys? I set that up. Slow roll, baby. All right, build the tension. Build the tension. Mr. Doran landed on black and got screwed last week. But I gave him a complimentary uh, song on the list anyways. Oh, no, not the black. Congrats, you won a full game review. All right, so there you go, Mr. Jason Pierre Sweeney. Game review of your choice. It could be a game of yours or it could be a famous game if you really wanted. Let me know what game you want. I will record it on stream and I will send you a copy of it. And that is your prize. And ladies and gentlemen, that is tonight's edition of Fish Lapperty. I have to thank once again. Let's just go through this. Let's just go through the, the, the videos one more time, guys, because they were just so damn epic. Okay, so for those of you who missed it, I just want to thank Jason Pierre Sweeney, Calculated Chess, Harlem Knight, and Kaido Lupin for reading their video questions today. Let's go through them one more time because they're just too good to only see once. All right. Look at that cute pooch. <laughs> How did you do that? How did you get your dog to look like that? Covered by Scott D. Davis on his tribute album, Pianotorium, and Apocalyptica on their cello album, Inquisition Symphony, this was Metallica's first true ballad. And against Bertrand's will, I'm going to give you guys a little bit of a hint. Here we go. Good luck! This Bangladeshi streamer recently scored a 1900 plus performance rating at an OTB tourney. And this Twitch singing chess streamer recently started playing Kerbal Space Program. 
What's going on, everybody? It's Calculating Chess here. So your question for the night is, Capablanca famously went undefeated for eight years, from February 1916 to March 1924, spanning 63 games, right? Surprisingly, this world champion once went nine years without a single loss. That was epic. I am going to shout out every one of those guys. Th this show has just gotten better and better for me. Um, I mean, that was epic. Jason coming in. 2,500, man. Oh, my God. His share, cheer shared rewards to 28 other people in chat. Wow. I got to give a shout out. Thank you so much, Jason, man. I got to shout these guys out. I mean, like... This show has become, like, the, the coolest thing I've ever done. It's just really, it's just a, a great time to hang out with you guys. I mean, there's no way that I don't think that our time can ever be, like, financially compensated. It has nothing to do with that. It's just an opportunity to hang out and do something fun that's got some chess, like, you know, content, but it's not chess. It's just a chance to hang out. Sometimes you got to do that. Omid plays FIFA you know, Hambo plays, you know, Fortnite or whatever, you know, or Botez. Sometimes you just got to have some fun. You know what I mean? Um, Kaido Lupin. Did I get everybody? Let me just make sure I got Harlem Knight. I just don't want to take that risk. Of missing Harlem. Okay, guys. So, at any rate, um, give those guys all a follow, man. These guys are just awesome to do that. Kaido had to catch a flight tonight. Otherwise, he, he would have been here. But, um, at any rate, so we've got... Uh, it was technically... It was a tie-break win for Jacuzzi. But, JPS got a little robbed on the, on the last question. Uh, Kuzi was cool enough to uh, pass the spin of the, the prize wheel. So, Jason will go into the Tournament of Champions at the end of this as the uh, theoretical uh, winner of the show today. And um, so we've had Kuzi, we've had Mr. Doran, we've had JPS, and we've had Pretty Fly for a Wi-Fi as winners so far. So we've had multiple different winners. We're five segments in. We're going to do five more of these, and then we'll see what happens. If people are liking it, we can keep on doing it. Okay? Hey, AB! I missed it again, but I know all the work you put in. Thank you, AB. Damn, you guys are freaking awesome. AB, did you see the videos, man? Like, the, I'm going to put those videos. I, I want to put those videos, if those guys will let me, in some kind of, uh, you know, a video clip or something like that. Maybe the one where I showed all four of them in sequence. Something like that. Because those are too good to be wasted just on one show. show they did stuff. So, there were bloopers. I got bloopers from multiple people. I had uh, Jason Pierre Sweeney actually did three questions. Kaido had a hilarious blooper where he swore in the middle of because he he screwed up the uh, the pronunciation of uh, Apocalyptica's uh, album. And then uh, Harlem had this funny one where it was like zooming in over and over to the coffee cup. It was hilarious. <laughs> no, I, I I didn't I didn't set up the bloopers. I I was having problems. I, I forgot to mention this. I was having problems with the uh, Kaido Lupin video. So I put all, everything else was going fine. I looked at Kaido's video. It, was, it, was, it worked great when I tested it. And then I put it in OBS and it was stalling out. It was stuttered out. I was like, what the hell's going on? I couldn't figure it out. I worked on it for about like close to an hour. And then uh, finally I didn't know what to do. So I went to the Discord. I'm like, can anybody help me with this? So JPS gave me a good little tip. He's like, you know, uh, go, go like uh, record it, you, you know, like in your in your clips or whatever. And then, like, save it as a separate clip, and then it'll be, like, in your own normal format. So I did that. I made it a little bit better, but it was still pretty choppy. But it was watchable. And then JPS is like, hey, man, um, I've got this software. Maybe I can fix it up for you. Boom. He took that thing, and he fixed it in two minutes flat. And it was and it was just exactly like Kaido sent it, which was still a little bit choppy. But at least it was, like, totally exactly how he sent it. So JPS pulled my eggs out of the frying pan there. And so I was so busy with all of those things that I forgot to do the the bloopers and then by the time I realized it was too late so but I'll maybe I'll put those in in a a clip somewhere as too totally love what you're doing on this channel anything else coming up um 
the the big news for me harlem is is the irl streams the irl streams are going to start at some point in time after i get my new phone and my new hookup with a computer i'm going to start irls and we're going to be trying some different kinds of games i'm i'm on the hiatus from the viewer game reviews right now because i just simply don't feel comfortable right now playing on chess.com until i know what i've done wrong that's making them keep detecting uh, problems or whatever where they're closing my account or freezing my account temporarily. I'm just not going to live like that. I don't want to live like that. Living in fear and walking on eggshells. I don't think that that's fair to me. So I'm not going to do that. So I, I do have chess 24 and there's other sites that I could go to, but right now I'm just taking a hiatus from that, from that uh, series. So I don't have any special series coming up, a couple of possible death matches, but other than that, the, the IRL is the big news. So, so keep your eyes out for that. The real question is, Harlem Knight, when are you going to stream again, sir? When are you going to stream? Because we miss you. And I don't know what Mad Rander is doing out there, but I'm sure it's something dirty. Okay? I'm sure it's something dirty. It is a community support. Yeah, I couldn't do this show without all of you guys. Even those little, like, four questions, the little bit of time that it saves me to to uh, write up all of those questions is pretty substantial. You'd be surprised. I have to... I have to fine tune every one of these boxes pixel by pixel. Like sometimes down to the fourth digit, fourth decimal digit. I have to size up every one of these photos, every one of these scenes. And there's multiple boxes, the header, the question, the answer, you know, the wild cards and all of that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of work that goes into it. But when I think about people taking time out of their busy days, you know, they got families and, 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 uh, regular jobs to think of Harlem going out and buying those donuts coming back home and putting this whole production together calculated putting on a whole production Kaido putting on his Metallica t-shirt and playing playing heavy metal Jason Pierre doing three questions and saving my freaking bacon with the tech genius okay that that is community baby that's how this thing is supposed to work okay that is why I love this chess community and no matter what I do for IRL or what improvements I make to my chess computers, you can 100% guarantee that the chess community will always be my, my focus and that the chess community on, stream, uh, on Twitch will always be where my heart is. That is a fact, yo. Channing, she's just constantly hating you? No, I don't believe that, Channing. I don't believe that. So we're going to close this up, baby. We're going to, I'm going to open up my Discord. If there's anybody that's not on my Discord, I'm going to open it up. We'll go in there and hang out a little bit. I'm probably not going to stay too long. I'm pretty exhausted and I need some food. Well, I'm going to go open it up. So if anyone wants to hang out in the, in the Discord and chat it up, we can do that as well. It might get a little adult, so just keep that in mind, guys. We're, but we're all adults here, so. Thank you so much again for, for everybody for joining me, especially to uh, Harlem Calculated, uh, JPS, and uh, Kaido Lupin for, for all of your, all of your, your, your help today and, and support. Congratulations to JPS, and especially thank you to Jacuzzi for his great sportsmanship. Thank you for the uh, folks you gave gift subs, Jason and Kuzi. Uh, AB coming in and lay with some big biddies, 2,500 biddies. From uh, JPS, he gave 100 bits earlier in the show as well, so that's at least 2,600. And I think he's up to 85 gift subs. Just crazy, guys. Just just, just crazy. Totally blown away. And also, Raptors! 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 The Raptors are one win from a ring, baby. A ring on the fingers of Canadian basketball team players. Oh, baby. I remember the day they drafted Mighty Mouse. I remember it very, very well. I remember that old logo of the, looked like a dinosaur humping a basketball. Okay, I remember those days like it was yesterday. All through the ages, uh, you know, uh, Davis and, and Carter and Bosch and Stoudemire and Camby and Calderon and, you know, all of these guys through the ages, Mo Pete and Alvin Williams. I remember it all, man. I remember it all like it was yesterday. I've been on this whole ride with these guys from day one, and there were some lean years, man. There were some bad years. There were some bad Raptors team. And to come to one game, one game from a freaking ring, baby, come on. We're going to do this, man. We are going to do this. All Americans on the team? <laughs> That's right. That's fine. We got one Canadian on the team. Don't worry about it, okay? And it doesn't matter. We're a Canadian basketball team, all right? 
That's fine. It doesn't matter where you come from. You're representing Toronto. And let me tell you something. You think Kawhi Leonard wants to go play with LeBron and that garbagey Laker team? And I'm a Lakers fan, but let's face the facts. That's a garbage team. You think he wants to go there and be second fiddle on a second-rate team to LeBron? I don't think so. Kawhi Leonard is coming back to Toronto next year. Don't worry about it. Moscatel remembers uh, Mighty Mouse. That's right. Alvin Williams, yeah, right? <laughs> Mo Pete, yeah. Mo, Mo, Morris Peterson was awesome, man. I, I miss those guys. One day, Birch out the Knicks will be there. You will, man. You will, absolutely. You guys had, you guys should have won a bunch with Patrick Ewing, man. You got robbed. You got robbed big time. And uh, Carmelo was just never going to do it. He was fun to watch, but he was never going to take you to the promised land. But you should have won with Patrick Ewing. All Toronto sports teams just make me want to watch rugby, says Channing. Well, I think Toronto has a rugby team. Kawhi would rather play for the Clippers. Kawhi is not going to go play for the Clippers. Kawhi is not going to the Clippers. No. No. Kawhi to New York? Maybe. That's a possibility. Hi, how do you place this, Percy? What's up, Percy? How you doing? Where it's, you're, you're too late, man. We finished up uh, Fish Slapperty for the night, but it was a really good time. I am going to post those VODs if it's okay with you guys. I'll just double check in the discords to make sure you're okay with that. But I would love to to post that so that people can enjoy those later on. Remember when the, the, the Raiders had Kareem? Kareem the Dream, you mean... Oh, the Raptors, yeah. Well, we had, we had, yeah, we had uh, Hakeem, the dream, Elijah one, yeah. He he had that dream shake. You remember that? Remember that little move? The dream shake. Yeah, we did have uh, Elijah one. That's right. This is for all of those guys. This is for all of those guys that suffered with us through those crappy Raptors teams and even some decent Raptors teams, but we just didn't have the bench. We just didn't have the star power. And this is especially for DeMar DeRozan. We, we, we love DeMar DeRozan. Yeah, he was such a big part of the community. He he was open about his battles with mental health issues. Goes back to Compton and, and does clinics for kids living out of Compton and stuff like that. You know, show, show them, hey, man, you could crawl out of this too. Man, I, we, we love uh, DeMar. And, and honestly, I don't know that we could have gotten here with, with him. I mean, certainly we couldn't have done it without Kawhi. Maybe we still would have done it with DeRozan. I'm not sure. But either way, he, he battled and suffered with us for so many years. And whenever we needed someone to take the ball, he took it. So this is for DeMar DeRozan. Kawhi just bought property in Toronto. Is that really true? Can we talk about curling? Mad Rander is actually into curling. I would love to see you do some, like, some, uh, you know, put on a, a curling outfit and, uh, and give us a, a, a demonstration. Yeah, Antonio Davis, exactly. Antonio Davis was amazing. Kareem Abdul <laughs> Elijah one. I curl to make my muscles big for my wife Madraker. Madranter. Oh Braden. Braden just subbed. What's up, man? LeBron got the Raptors coach fired. What? He got that billionaire kicked out. I heard that guy got kicked out for a year and got fined half a million. I haven't been up on the news all day. Last I had heard, he was only kicked out of the finals. But I heard that guy that shoved Lowry, uh, Lowry got uh, got kicked out for a year out of NBA games, which is pretty awesome. That was a Harlem Knight gift. Wow. That's five gift subs. Holy cow, man. Thank you so much, Harlem Knight. Man, oh, man. You guys are freaking awesome, man. You guys are, you guys are freaking awesome. Uh, that's all I can say. I watch chess, uh, Twitch chess streams to get away from the jocks. Hey, Japanese tutor coming in with a party of 11. What's up, Japanese tutor? We're closing up pretty soon, bud. But thank you for that raid. I appreciate that, man. We were doing fish slapperty. It's got some chess content, but we're not actually playing chess tonight. But welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing okay. How about those raptors, man? Huh? How about those raptors, yo? I sacrificed about three quarters of that raptors game so that we could do fish slapperty today because I'd rather hang out with you guys. But I got to tell you, I'm going to watch that. I'm going to watch that in uh, replay. 
Toronto Wolves just won their league? What? Is that really true, Moscatel? Japanese tutor just subbed. What? Holy cow, man. What's going on out here, guys? What's going on out here on the Trout Show today? You guys are going ham. He's one of the owners of the Warriors. Kicked out for a year, yeah. No basketball-related activity for a year and five. Good. I mean, it's a little steep, but I mean, I feel like y y there's two things you can't do in basketball. Don't touch the players, and for the love of God, if you're a player, don't touch the refs. That's two things you cannot ever allow in, the, in those games. If you don't have those two rules, you have no civility, and and uh, your sports just becomes, uh, you know, you can't have guys that big, you know, pushing pushing around and getting into brawls. Too dangerous. Not a good look. That was another Harlem Knight gift sub. Holy crap. Harlem Knight six gift subs. Thank you so much, man. Japanese tutor, welcome, welcome. Flash those. You got to flash those fish, man. Channing says he is a billionaire. Yes, that's right. A billionaire and a millionaire getting into a fist fight. Touching the fans is okay. Ask Ron Artest. It's funny you mentioned Ron Artest because me and my uh, entrepreneur coach were, were having a conversation about him just today. We were talking about that. We were... We were noticing how after he changed his name to Meta World Peace that he seemed to actually become more peaceful. But remember that time those 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 two clowns came out of the stands onto the court and like chucked a drink at him or something like that? Remember all that? Like that that kind of stuff cannot happen, man. Can't can't do that stuff. When I was a soccer ref, I wish somebody would touch me. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm guessing that they probably weren't doing that. Hey, what's up, Oxford? Welcome, welcome. Thank you for that follow. I'm guessing that people were not Messing around with Harlem Knight. That's going to be my guess. We did C3. Oh, you did seriously? You did the Mora? Oh, man. Is that in your VODs, dude? Halfway to your world open goal? Nice, man. Nice, nice. Well, I'm going to make a contribution towards that. I really want to see you go to that, go to that tournament. I feel Japanese tutor like you were still like like several hundred points underrated. Muscatel says, I love the moron gambit. I mean, stands were cleared and they went right around me. Are you serious? Holy cow. <laughs> wow. I played a lot of soccer, but I, I don't remember any big brawls. I remember I, I boarded a guy pretty hard one time in, in uh, indoor soccer and got a penalty, but I don't ever remember getting in any brawls. Man, oh man. I, I hope you can make it uh, Japanese tutor. I have stories. I would love to hear some of those stories. I don't know when you're streaming again next, man, but I hope it's going to be soon. We got Braden back in the house. We got Japanese back. All the streamers coming back. Guys, we're going to go find someone to raid. So let me just check out what the numbers are. We got 32. That's not a bad little group. Let's see who we got that we could raid. Um, Canty's on. Japanese is not on anymore. So let's see who else. Let me just give a refresh. Any recommendations, guys, for a raid? Um, my, my buddy cut, cut, card counter Chris is on. He's playing Magic, but he's a good friend of mine. Botez is playing Fortnite. I mean, since we're playing something that's not chess, I'll tell you what. I, I really like my boy uh, card counter Chris. It's been a while since I give him. A, he's given me lots of big raids. So let's go see what. Let's go see what. Just do me a favor and stick around, even if it's just for a few minutes. And, uh, and and let's go say hi to, to my boy Card Counter Chris. Super cool guy. Yeah, super super cool guy. He plays Magic the Gathering and some other video games and stuff like that. But, but let's go go say hi to him anyways and, and make his night. All right. Hey, guys. Fish Slapperty, man. It was an absolute success. It was a total smash success for me. I don't know what kind of stuff we're going to get next week. But these guys keep up in the game. These video cameos and stuff. You guys, the viewers, man. Dropping gift subs and donos and stuff like that. I mean, the, the work is worth it just for the fun. Just to hang out with you guys. And a lot of you guys hang out the whole show. I really, really appreciate you guys. I hope you have an excellent weekend. We'll probably stream again tomorrow night. Not 100% for, for certain. But at any rate, we will see you guys again very soon on the Trout Show. Take care. Thanks for being here. Bye-bye.